is there any question at this point so yeah go ahead so uh, what happens after the um, x rays fall into the detector i did not get that part can you repeat so, so uh, imagine the detector like a tv screen okay imagine that you take a piece of paper with lots of holes in it I, I, this is again not completely accurate and you shine a light and as shown over here let's say the light goes through these holes and diffract so that you get spots on uh, on the tv screen now the tv screen will have detector uh, will have uh, will will basically be pixelated in a way where each pixel will detect the light and transfer the information to a computer fine then the whole uh, the uh, the pixels which have been which have been uh, which have received the light and which are activated will be erased and you will get a blank screen the crystal will be turned by 1 degree and x ray will, will be shot through the crystal again you take an image you turn the crystal again you uh, erase the screen and you take another picture so you take a few thousand pictures like this all of them looking approximately like the picture shown over here then all these images are collated the intensities of each spot is measured and the patterns you see over here are based on the symmetry of what is called as a unit cell inside the crystal so these are all very complicated uh, uh, concepts and uh, which you will learn as i said in third year what you need to know is if you have a crystal of which is a regular crystalline array you shine x rays which have a very low wavelength you will get a pattern and the pattern can be used to decipher electron density map the electron density map once you fit your model inside the electron density map will give you an atomic resolution structure of the macromolecule that you are trying to uh, that you are trying to solve is that clear thank you sir sure thank you sir so yeah. could you explain the phase issue with crystallography you spoke about not in this class it's too complicated okay sir okay just remember that you are there is something called as a phase problem and you are losing the phase and effectively if you think of a beam of light so basically the phase information is where the light is in phase here or here so you are losing this information all you are getting is a each spot which is very intense or you have a spot which is less intense so you have intensity but you are losing the phase information in in uh, in it because we cannot detect uh, we do not have an ability to detect the phase if we knew the phase okay. then we could solve the structure even more quickly so uh, i had a doubt yeah. so what is a and b type of dna i'll come to it that is all you know i am doing things in a step wise manner i'll come to a and b more quickly okay, sir sir yes, uh, in the electron density map uh, can we find each and every atom with the help of electron density map yes so it depends on so different crystals crystals are nothing but crystalline arrays which we have made right after purifying a micromolecule with proteins being the most common now all crystals which we grow in the lab and phd students do that regularly are not of the same quality there there is huge reasons for a variation in quality so some crystals give diffraction patterns which are very high resolution which means we can get as much as 1.5 one angstrom resolution i'll explain what an angstrom is okay that's 1/10 of a nanometer but some crystals don't but yes the answer to your question is we can get atomic resol resolution electron density maps which then can be used to extrapolate to a model which is a atomic level model for using x ray crystallography sir it is still not clear to me why the fourth spot was missing in the dna picture the question you are asking is literally a phd third year Uh, question okay especially because you are asking something related to fiber diffraction which frankly i don't really understand so it turns out from what i can read is that if you do a the, the missing fourth spot seem to indicate to watson and crick and to rosalind franklin that there were two uh, strands in the dna not a single strand and you're right i even i don't understand at this point why that is so okay Okay, so this is one of the questions I can't answer. Unfortunately, I can answer some questions about spots on crystals, but fiber diffraction I have never done, and I have no experience. Okay, sir. Yeah. So, sir, uh, yeah. sir can you repeat uh, how the uh, Watson's book book created controversy? So it created controversy because till the time I published this book, 
nobody publicly ever said that they had gone to king's college london they had gone to rosalind's lab in her absence and morris wilkins had shown her photograph 50 uh, shown them photograph 51 and it was the photograph 51 which suddenly uh, created uh, neuronal firing in their brain which led to the structure so it's almost as if if they had not seen the photograph they might not have made the model and even if they had made the model it would have been much later rather than earlier they would have to wait till they saw the picture in a paper which rosalind was publishing in nature so literally they got they got uh, information about uh, about the patterns which the fibers of dna were given giving in advance okay there is nothing wrong in that but rosalind didn't know about it. then watson is a kind of a interesting guy i'll show you why he's an interesting guy he also made a few comments about uh, personal comments about people in the field which was not appreciated okay fine uh, so uh, by the way you can just do a google search of all of this and these are controversies which have been talked about again and again and again so this is very information easy information to get um, sir the basic nucleotide uh... Uh, what is called arrangement or basic nucleotide uh, structure is the same in all forms of DNA. Yes. So, like in all forms of DNA, it will be like one phosphate, one sugar, and one base. Yes. So then, why do these different shape arise? The shapes are biologically functional, right? It's like saying that if you uh, again a strange analogy, why would you make screws, for example, in different shapes? Isn't one screw enough? each screw which is used for fitting a door or fitting a cupboard or fitting a table has its own uh, they are long screws they are short screws they have functional significance similarly these different forms of dna which are believed to be found inside the cell they are not just artifacts of uh, humidity and salt have been clearly shown to have functional roles in fact the triple helical part and the four helical part have more functional roles than we ever realized so the more interesting question is what stranded dna why is it very important and it turns out they have very important biological roles more than uh, let us say z form versus a form of dna also sir didn't uh, like francis and crick disprove that triple helical dna can't exist so why is it existing no so you see all in the 1950s especially before 1953 there was not much data about what this molecule looked like there was data for proteins but dna was people were clueless about whether it was single stranded double stranded triple helical and the b form of dna is definitely a double helical anti parallel structure but uh, it's only 10 years 20 years later that we realize that other forms of dna especially triple helical do exist so it's not as if the idea of triple helix is wrong it's just that even the structure which linus pauling drew for the model he made in 1953 early 1953 the even the model was wrong so the current triple triple helical form of dna is completely correct because well, the model is correct and we have structures of triple helical forms of dna and uh, for it to be accurate the three dimensional location of each nucleotide uh, should be correct and uh, linus pauling was nowhere near the correct correct structure at that point he basically disproved the model no? not the idea of triple helical dna yes basically so the model was wrong they and uh-huh. for the first 10 years the, the idea was that they couldn't be a triple helix but today we know there is a triple helix yeah so what, where is it this triple helical dna found it's it's found inside the cell sir it, all cells inside all cells inside your cells also okay thank you sir 